Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, Hi, thanks. everybody. Um, welcome to uh, Facebook Live by Soso Studio. We are going to go over the Continental M7 today. So um, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate your um, comments and your your questions and all of that as we go through it. We are doing these Facebook Live presentations as machine familiarization lessons for all of our customers that bought machines for us, okay, from us so um, at the recent quilt shows. And then maybe don't live near the shop and can't come in and get one-on-one -on -one help and instruction. So we're recording some um, information, general information on the machines and, and uh, we hope we can get you comfortable on your machine and started on it right away uh, with the information yeah, we go over today. So again, my name is Sarah Campbell. I'm the owner of Soso Studio. Um, we also have Priscilla who is manning the camera today and she's going to give you guys a quick tour around the shop. Um, <laughs> she loves when I sign up for stuff. So she's going to do a quick tour around the shop and I'm going to get the machine ready to, um, ready to film and I'll see you back here in a minute so we can get started. Okay? <laughs> All right. That'll give, give everybody else a chance to chime in. Or okay. Join in. Let's see. Okay. See if I can do this. Okay. Hi, I'm Priscilla. I do the marketing here at Soso Studio. So I'm just going to give you a quick tour of the store. Um, let's turn this around. Okay. So walking into our store, this is the overview. We are located in Bogart, Georgia. Um, for everybody who's not from Georgia or who's Somewhere else in, uh, in Georgia, it's really close to Athens, Georgia. Um, we do three things. We are a quilt shop, so we sell mostly quilt cotton fabrics. And we are a sewing studio, um, and we do sewing classes for kids and adults. If you live near Soso Studio, we're currently enrolling for kids' summer camps. So if you want to have your child come and learn how to sew this summer, um, feel free to sign them up. And we also are a Janome certified dealer. So we do a lot of, um, we sell a lot of Janome sewing and embroidery machines. Um, okay, so here is some of our fabric. This is our solids wall. Some little trinkets right here. Some of our new arrivals, we have fabric from Moda Fabrics and Riley Blake's Designs, um, art gallery fabrics, Ruby Star Society. We've been currently obsessed with all the Tilda fabrics. Um, I keep telling all the staff members to start doing other projects, to start making other projects and non-Tilda fabrics because the Instagram feed is just covered in Tilda right now. Um, here is our Christmas shelf some pre-cuts okay, and our machines if you ever visit our store our machines are scattered about through throughout the store um, and they're all for sale um, this is probably the star at Soso studio it's the long arm Julie's about to quilt her quilt on this um, we rent time on this so if you live again if you live near Soso studio you are welcome to take a certification course and then rent time in the long arm for $20 an hour. Um, and it has pro stitcher, which is what's turned on right now. Um, so that basically just means that it's just gonna quilt any design that you want instead of you having to free motion it. Um, and if you take any classes with us, um, you will sit at one of these tables right now. <laughs> it's kind of our work area, so it's kind of scattered, but we promise it'll be better when you come in for a class. Um, here are some, an HD9, another long arm. This is, this is the newest, um, the, our newest long arm. It's a stationary long arm. Um, and then there's the QM18. QMP18, sorry. And then the Kimberbell corner, some other zippers and serger thread and embroidery thread on the floor. And yeah, that's our store. So 
If you live near us, please stop by and visit us. Or if you don't, please check out our website. It's just sososudio.com. Okay, you ready, Sarah? I'm ready. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the li or the lesson. Okay, here we go. Okay. okay, so we sold a lot of these machines at, in particular at QuiltCon, and then several more at OSQE. Um, I think we actually bought more than Janome thought we were gonna buy because we sold so many, so they're back ordered right now and we couldn't get a new one into the store to do this demo on. Um, so we decided to borrow one from one of our favorite customers. So Carol Ann, thank you so much for loaning us your machine for the day. Um, we're taking very good care of it. The, um, if you didn't get one, there is a universal table for this machine and it looks similar to, Priscilla will show you that one. It's, it's similar to this one, except it's a little bit longer <laughs> because the Continental M7, it's longer. Right? Yeah. And then there's actually a little drawer system on the Continental M7 table that goes right here. It's got a couple drawers and a cabinet, like a little cubby, um, which is kind of a nice addition too. So we have those, they come in boxes, easy to ship. Um, if you're interested in your machine sitting in a table, I know it comes with a nice, beautiful extension table as well with a drawer in it. So if you're not interested in a universal table, that's fine. But I just wanted to let you guys know that was an option. Um, we offered those at the show for a particular special price. So if you are watching this video and you want one of those at that price, just give us a call and mention the video and we'll be happy to honor that deal for you. The other um, thing I want to tell you guys about is going to be at the end of the video. So tune in for another uh, special sale price on something that's kind of a big ticket item uh, that goes with your machine. And I'll give you a hint. It's sitting right here. I've got a special deal for price on those as well, and we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Stick around for that. Okay. Do you want to put your earbuds yeah. on? Priscilla wants me to put in earbuds, and maybe <laughs> the sound will be a little better than the ones we've done. Okay. Is that good? So, can somebody comment and say if you can if you can hear us? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So the Continental M7, if you haven't purchased one um, and you're watching this video to see if it's a machine that you might like to have, I will tell you right away that it is a machine you would like to have. It is uh, my favorite machine in the whole shop, um, excepting maybe the long arm. I'm quite addicted to the long arm these days. But this machine is fantastic for a couple of reasons. Number one, it has this huge throat space in it, um, largest on the market, I believe. And the motor inside of it is very powerful. It's a newly designed brushless motor that's only been out a couple of years and it's um, very powerful and will last longer than a motor in another sewing machine. So the longevity, the length of time that you will have this machine is, is quite impressive. So it's when they designed it, because the throat is so big, they took the usual placement of the iPad, which would be over here, or not iPad, I'm sorry, the touch screen, which would be over here, and they moved it up top so that it's closer to where you are working. Um, it has some really nice design features. It's in the professional line of machines, and those from Janome are some of my favorites because they have these nice big metal powder coat bases. So the machine is heavy. It's not one you'd want to take with you to a quilt retreat or something like that. This is your home machine, and then you have a travel one for piecing at a quilt retreat. But the um, the base of the machine is really smooth, and it's at sewing at the high speeds that this machine sews at, it will stay stable on your table. Um, so it's really nice for that. It is a hefty machine. Let's see if y'all can see it pretty well. And then it comes with a nice big extension table. I did not borrow Carol Ann's extension table, so I can't show that to you guys today. But tune in uh, later. We'll do another video when the new one comes in, maybe that shows some of those features. Um, it also has the upright spool stand, which I like for larger spools of thread, cones of thread, um, and just easy accessibility to your most common colors. And this little telescoping 
piece comes up. Um, in addition to all of your features that you can access on your touch screen, you also have a direct select for your stitch width or your needle drop placement and your stitch length, which for me is, is very quick and handy. And I use those knobs a ton when I'm sewing on this machine. All right, so we're gonna start, let's see, we've got a different foot on than we want to start with. We are gonna start just with threading the machine and then we're gonna talk about all of the features and how to navigate your way through the touch screen. And then we'll talk about some of the accessories that it comes with and some of the accessories it doesn't come with. It does come with a lot. So there's not a whole lot else that, that you'll want right away when you get started sewing on it. But depending on some particular projects you might be working on, there might be some additional accessories that are pretty handy. Um, okay, so we are set now. So we're gonna thread it. And the first thing I'm gonna do is wind a bobbin. So I'm just gonna put my thread on there and it comes with spool caps. On an upright spool stand, I usually don't use the spool caps. I just leave them off and the thread comes off just fine for me. And then if you have slicker threads, it comes with some thread nets that you can put around your cones of thread. If you have slicker threads that are falling off the spool and spooling up underneath, you can put one of those on. Okay, so I've come up through here. Now this machine sews at such high speeds that they added this little extra hole to thread through. So the thread doesn't just come flying off of there when you're sewing at a really high speed. It's also handy for later if I put that down, when I bring it back up, my thread's still gonna be in the same place, okay? And then after I come off of there, I'm gonna go under this little guy right here. So I'm snapping forward under there, okay, that thread guide. And then I'm gonna wind a bobbin first. So I'm following the dotted line on the diagram on the top of the machine. So I'm gonna come over here. This is a little tension disc. It gives us a little tension on our bobbin. So we're gonna pop the thread in there and make sure that it stays snapped into that disc right there. And then I've got an empty bobbin right here. And I'm going to take the end of my thread and go through one of these holes. So I'm going between the two discs on the bobbin and then popping up through the hole. Okay, and then I just put my bobbin right on there, snap it down. Now this machine has an independent bobbin winding motor. It's extremely quiet, so I don't expect you'll hear it at all on the video. Um, and the button for winding the bobbin is right here. But we do have to flip this little guy over and this is a, a adjustable guard, right? We can unscrew that and we can change the angle of this right here. And what it'll do is when the bobbin fills up, it'll push against that and it'll stop the bobbin winder motor. Okay, so we push that over. And now I've got some tension, some tautness on my thread running from the tension disc to the bobbin, which you want. Because if you have it real loose and slack like this, when it starts winding, it's gonna start winding underneath this bobbin rest. And so we want to pull that taut so that it starts winding on the bobbin instead. So I've got that pushed over and then I'm just gonna push this little motor button right here and it's gonna wind for a minute and then I'm gonna stop and go ahead and trim off scissors. I didn't grab any scissors. Hang on one second, everybody. And I'm just gonna trim off this thread right at the bobbin. And then I can start winding that again. Okay. And when it fills up, it'll push that little button over to the right. I can barely hear that myself and I'm standing right in front of the machine. It's a very quiet little bobbin winder. It's a nice thing. And let's see, it's about done. It's winding pretty quick. There it goes. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the bobbin off of there and I'm just going to cut that thread right there. Okay, and then I can put my bobbin in the machine. So this is the little bobbin cover. I've got a little black button over here that I just slide over to the side and that pops that cover off. Um, be careful where you put that. We get calls all the time that it fell on the floor and people can't find it because it's see-through. So put it somewhere you can find it again. 
And then I'm going to put my bobbin in. We always say when we're teaching our kids in the, in the classroom and adults too, we, we tell them that the bobbin needs to be P for perfect. So if you're looking at a capital letter P, that's the shape it would be. Okay. Instead of this way, we want the bobbin that way, P for perfect. And we're going to pop it right down in that hole. And now this guide right here, let's see if I get the stylus out here. This guide right here, when I pull the thread up under this guide, it's going to pull it naturally under this tension disc right here. So this piece of metal is the tension disc or your bobbin. All right. And so I'm going to pull my thread. I'm just holding the bobbin still with my finger and I'm pulling my thread under this silver guide right here. And it naturally goes under that one as well. Okay. And I pull it around. Once I get tucked in there, then I'm going to come around this little guide right here. And there's actually a little tiny blade in here that snaps off the end of your thread. So I just guide that around and snap it right off. And now the bobbin has a little tail that's long enough for the machine to pick it up when you start sewing. So we don't have to do anything more with that. Put that back in, snap it down. And then we come back up to the top of the machine. And now we're no longer winding a bobbin. So I'm going to come off of here. And then I like to thread my machines with my hand and, or my thread in both hands. And I'm going to snap it down here first underneath this guy. This is step number one. Oh, actually, it says step number three. You're hmm. following the solid guide now, right? Yes, we're following this solid guide right now. So I've, I've got this is two. This is three. This is four, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm coming straight down and around here, number five and up. And then this is called the thread uptake lever. And the thread uptake lever, I want to come around the right side of it. And I'm just going to trap my thread back here. And then come, I'm coming around the back side and coming forward and I'm pulling it, giving it a tug to snap the thread into the front of this thread uptake lever. So I'm trying to get it into this little hole right here. Okay. And you want to snap it forward into that because there's a little guide there that keeps your thread from popping back out of it right there. So we want to make sure that it snaps forward into that little hole. And then we come down. Now there's a thread keeper or a thread guide right here that I can enter from the side. And then there's another one at the top of the needle. So I just snap in like that. Now this one, I need my thread to be all the way in the left side of this guy in there for my needle threader to work. So I'm going to give it a tug to make sure my neat, my thread is over in the left side of this little thread keeper. Okay. And then this Pac-Man guy right here is my needle threader. And I like on this machine that it's visible. It's got a lot more, I just have a lot more clear view on this one than I do on some of the others. And then I come around here on this side of the machine, there's a thread cutter. And so I'm going to come from underneath backward forward and snap off the end of my thread. That way the machine doesn't have so much thread to try to pull through the eye of the needle. Okay, so I did all of that threading with my presser foot raised up because you have tension discs up here in your machine. And if your presser foot is up, then your tension discs are open and the thread can get in them. If your presser foot is down, then the tension discs are closed and the thread can't get in there. So make sure you thread your machine with your presser foot raised. Okay, now I've got that, um, loaded into the the threader and ready to go i'm going to lower my presser foot out of the way because i find that the threader works better when the presser foot is lowered and out of the way so i'm just going to press this button up here and then this is my threader right here push down and let's see if carol ann's threader is working bingo and it pulls that little loop of thread off the back okay i can raise the presser foot back up pull my thread in between the two skis and off to the back and I'm ready to sew. The needle threaders are the first thing to go out on a machine. They have a little hook on them that goes from the back forward through the eye of the needle and grabs your thread and pulls it back through. If you're using a needle that has a very small eye, it can bend that hook. And if you're using a thread that's very thick, it can pull that hook out of whack because it won't be able to pull it back through the eye. So I use my needle threader, my automatic threader, when I have a standard 40, 50 weight type thread in there, 
and I have a like a size 14 needle. If I'm doing something with thicker threads or a smaller needle, then I usually just thread it by hand because I don't want to mess up my needle threader. You can get them fixed and you can replace them, but it's easy to throw them out. I have a machine at home that I've had that same needle threader for 10 years because I'm careful when I use it. Okay. Um, all right. So that's that. So again, this is a really nice machine um, in its features that we have. And we're going to try to go through a bunch of those today. Um, if there's something that I miss or particular questions that I have, you guys can toss them in the comments and we'll try to address them um, as we get them. Okay? First, do you mind moving the machine that way? Like, this way? Yeah. Is that better? Nope. Try moving it like this. <laughs> Is that good? Oh my gosh, that made it worse. It made it worse? <laughs> Is that good? What if I sit right here? Okay. Is that better? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. We are fumbling our way through these things, you guys. Okay. So let's talk about what we see here on the screen. And, um, we'll get to these buttons as we start sewing. But let's talk about first what we're seeing uh, here on the screen. So here I have a diagram that shows me the stitch that I'm on. Okay, so the stitch that I have selected is just this normal straight stitch. This little oval at the top is representative of your um, needle drop hole in your stitch plate, in your needle plate. Okay, so that's what that oval is. So if you can tell my stitch is actually moved over a little bit to the right and I was playing with stitch width earlier and so that's I did that earlier when we were playing around but four and a half is center position for your needle so if you have this needle drop set to four and a half then your stitch is going to be straight down the middle of your needle plate and four and a half I know is center because this machine is a nine millimeter width for needle drop so this, the needle will go nine millimeters from left to right in this needle drop hole. So four and a half is exactly in the middle. And then because I'm on a straight stitch, I can change that with this little dial over here. If I change the width of my stitch, I'm really just changing my needle drop position in a straight stitch, okay? Then I have stitch length. So right now, let's see if I can get that back in the middle stitch length right now it's set to two and a half and I can change my stitch length over here with this quick dial and it makes them longer and shorter I can also change it here with these buttons and then I can come here with this little pop-up screen right here this little minus to plus mountain this is your where you make adjustments so if I touch that it brings up a pop-up that shows me my needle drop position, my stitch length, the thread tension setting, and the presser foot pressure adjustment. Okay? All right, so that's what all that is. These are the different stitches, and these are the categories of stitches that we're going to get into. All right, over here on the machine, we have um, sort of our operating buttons. So let me grab some fabric. We're gonna come back to this, don't worry. But let's go over these buttons first. So I have, first of all, presser foot, uh, the presser foot operating button. So this machine has an automatic presser foot, which is really cool. I can raise and lower it with the button rather than having to reach around and do it back here. I can also make minor adjustments with the lever in the back once I've got it lowered if I wanna move my fabric to line something up, I can do it back here as well. But I don't even have to use that button or the lever in the back. What I can do is I can just put my foot on my gas pedal, I call it, underneath the foot pedal, underneath the machine, underneath the table. If I put my foot on there and just start sewing, it's gonna lower it for me, which is pretty cool, okay? So we have options. We can do it here, we can do it here, and we can do it just with our foot pedal. This button right here is thread cutting button. So if I press that, it's gonna cut the threads for me and raise the needle and raise the presser foot all in one step. 
okay? So I can just put my fabric under there. Sew what I need to sew. And then hit my thread cut button. Now this thread cut button operates a little blade underneath the machine right here that slides back and forth to cut your threads. If you use that every time you sew a seam, it will eventually wear down like a pair of scissors would. It'll get dull and you can have it replaced, but you can save that uh, piece. You can make it last a lot longer if you don't use this every time you make a stitch. If you save it for, you know, when you're quilting and you're in the middle of your quilt and you're ready to stop, you can hit that button and that way you don't have to fish underneath for your bobbin thread when you pull it off, that sort of thing. Um, so it just be, you can be selective about when you use that and it'll last a lot longer. Okay. The next button over is needle up and down. So if I press that, my needle's going to go down and then back up. Um, this one right here ties a knot in your threads. And this is your reverse for traditional back tacking. So to lock up my stitches at the beginning and the end of my seam, I have two different options. I can do regular back tack. So I'm going to sew a couple stitches forward. And then I'm gonna hold down my reverse button and sew a couple of stitches backwards, okay? So you've gotta hold this down while you work your foot pedal in order for that to operate. And then when I let it go, it'll sew forwards again. My other option at the end of my seam is to use this knot tying button. So if I press this little bullseye and you just have to press it one time and it starts blinking, then I'm gonna hold down my foot pedal and it's gonna tie a knot in my threads. So it did a couple stitches right on top of each other and tied a knot in those threads. So I'm gonna pick up my needle, pick up my presser foot and just bring my fabric around here and use this thread snip. And there's the knot right there that it tied. Okay, so this is traditional back tacking and that's the knot. All right, the other thing I've got up here is speed control. This operates the maximum speed of the machine. Um, so if, if you have it all the way up, you can still operate the speed with your foot pedal underneath the table. You can still slow it down, so slower and so faster. This just adjusts the maximum speed of the machine. So if I have a small project or I'm working on something curvy, I might slow it down. I usually don't slow it that far down, but. might make it a little bit easier to sew, okay? All right, so adjusting tension, the machine does that automatically. You can go in and fine tune it if you're on a tricky fabric or you have a tricky thread and something isn't looking the way that you want it to look, you can go in and make adjustments to that tension right here. So right now it's set to 3.4. Is there an auto in there? Um, when we get into the different stitches, the auto setting will change. This over here is your presser foot pressure. So this is how hard this presser foot is pressing down on the fabric. So I sewed that curve pretty easily. Sometimes if your presser foot is pressing down too hard, it can be hard to turn your fabric underneath that presser foot. And so lightening up the pressure of your presser foot presser might make sense. That's a lot of presser, I, foot, pressure. presser foot pressure. <laughs> I never can say that correctly when I want to. Okay. Um, another cool thing to look at down here, this is favorite stitch settings. Okay. And if you don't see this right here, I'm going to go into settings and tell you how to turn it on. Sometimes when you get these machines new, you have to go into settings and turn favorite stitch settings on in order to have accessibility to that. So let's go there. So you remember we hit this to bring up our pop-up. I'm going to hit this little button to shrink it back down. Okay. So over here on the right side of your screen, you see some standard buttons that are there all the time. So I have home that brings me back here. I have a little file with an arrow and that accesses the memory of the machine or the, if you have a USB flash drive plugged in, and you can go in here and you can save uh, stitches that you've designed um, or, you know, like words, labels, all that kind of stuff. Sequences of stitches you can go save to the machine. 
you can also upload. Uh, I believe this machine, I think, comes with Stitch Composer. Yes, and thank you. <laughs> and Stitch Composer is a program where you can go in and design your own stitch and then upload it to the machine. So that's what that's about. Um, let's skip this one for right now. We'll come back to it. This is settings. Let's go in here to settings. So in machine settings or in the settings button, we have machine settings. We have a tab for sewing settings. And then we have a tab for language. Under machine settings, the first thing I usually do is go and change it to inches. And Carol Ann's is already on inches rather than millimeters. You can uh, play with your sounds and your lights and all that kind of stuff. Bob and winding speed, we got that cranked up. We want to get those done, right? And then over here, one over six, that means there are six pages of options here for us to go through under machine settings. So there's lights. I can do them a little dimmer if I'm sewing in a, I don't know, while my kid's asleep next, I don't know <laughs> when you would want it. I like it nice and bright when I'm sewing. Okay. And then page three, we've got date and time settings. So this machine actually has a clock. Um, and when you get the machine brand new on the back side of the machine, is it right down here? There's a little, see this little plastic tab? I guess Carol Ann has never taken hers out. So when you pull this little plastic tab, it's going to pull that out right there. And it makes a connection between the, the battery and the, it turns on your clock, basically. Is that good for glare? Okay, so we pulled out we pulled out that little tab and then we can go in and we can change the the we're gonna set this for Carol Ann. I bet she didn't even know that it had a clock. 2023, we can go do date and we can go do time. We'll set it for her later. Let's go back and see where it is. There it is right there. There's your clock. And obviously the time is not right, so we'll have to go set that for her. Okay. So we were on date and time settings, clock display is on, clean bobbin holder message displayed every five hours. So every five hours of sewing time, it's gonna say, hey, clean your bobbin. So that's a nice little warning. Um, and then there's some other things in here that we really probably don't need to mess with too much. You can set screensavers, you can up upload on your USB, you can upload pictures. So when the machine goes to sleep, if you've walked away from it for 10 minutes, it'll go to sleep. It'll upload a little picture of your favorite dog or something. And then let's see. So that's basically all we want to do in there. So let's, oh wait, here's format. If you use a USB with this machine, you want a, a nice clean new USB, put it in the machine and go over and format it. And that way it, it sets the USB up to communicate with this machine properly. Um, so that's a really good idea when you put it, get a new USB to go do that. Let's go over to sewing settings. So under sewing settings, this one's interesting, thread cut after auto lock. So if I get to the end of my seam, remember when we tied that knot right there? Um, when I tie a knot, if I turn that on, when I tie a knot, then it will automatically cut threads for me after that. So that's kind of a fun setting. Um, I usually leave that off because sometimes I'll tie a knot at the beginning of the seam and I don't want it to cut the threads at that point. Um, needle stop position. You can have it stop with your needle down in the fabric or your needle raised up. Uh, depending on the project that I'm working on, I'll go in and change that. And then here's your auto tension setting. So this is for overall in the whole machine. If you are using you know, a different thread and you need the tension setting to be a little bit different. It's right here. Um, I went through all the parts on that. Okay. Sorry, everybody just had to pass along a message. And then here's presser fit pressure. You can make overall adjustments there as well. And then feed dogs up or down upper thread breakage sensor. So when your thread breaks, it'll stop sewing and it'll tell you, Hey, rethread your machine. And then bobbin thread remaining sensor. So it'll tell you when your bobbin is low. And oops, I'm going the wrong way. Foot height for pivoting. We'll talk about pivoting in a minute. 
the when you have the automated presser foot, you can turn on something called pivoting, where when you stop sewing, it'll raise the foot just a little bit and leave the needle down so you can turn your fabric. And I'll show you guys that in a second, but you can change the height of your foot when it does that right here. Adjustable startup speed. So when, when I hit the start stop button or when I press my foot pedal underneath the table, do I want it to start out kind of slow and then build up speed or do I want it to just slam into gear full tilt, right? So those are your options there for both the start stop. And the start stop button only works when you have your foot pedal unplugged. So if you want to sew with the start stop button, you got to unplug your foot pedal. Okay. And then we've got favorite stitch adjustment. This is the one right here that I wanted to show you guys. So come in here and make sure that's turned on. So we're in sewing settings. We're on the fourth page, favorite stitch adjustment, turn that on. Okay. All right. And when you're done changing anything in the settings, you have to go up here and hit okay. Okay. So since we just talked about pivoting, let me show you what that is real quick. So we have the automated presser foot. I can lower my presser foot. And then I have a little button right here. And I'm going to turn that one on. Okay. Now when I sew, when I come to a point where I want to stop and turn the fabric, it's going to leave the needle down. And it just raises the presser foot three millimeters or whatever we have that setting set to. And then I can change direction. I find this really handy when I'm sewing, you know, my way around some zipper pouches, that big old box, or if I'm doing applique because I can really fine tune the direction of my applique every time I stop. Okay, so that's a really cool function. That's called pivoting. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so back to our big screen right here. So we've talked about all these buttons. We've talked about these buttons. Um, back to our big screen up here. Okay, so we talked about our needle drop and our stitch length. This up here shows what foot that is recommended for this particular stitch that we are on. So I've got the A foot right there. Um, and then these are my different stitches. So on this machine, we don't have a stitch card. We don't have any kind of like general guide to look at that's external to the machine. It's all in here. You ready to put that up there? Yeah. Okay. If you have comments now, Priscilla's going to go check the computer and see if anybody has any questions that we can start answering as we go through. Is that good? No? That's <laughs> all right. We do what we can do. Oh, there is a glare. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Ta-da. Okay. All right. So we have our different stitches right here. So we are in utility stitches. So this little tab right here shows utility stitches, a straight stitch and a zigzag. And so these are all of our utility stitches. Now, this over here shows that there's 37 pages of stitches to go through. They are grouped and categorized up here into different sections um, or you could scroll through page by page and go see everything that's on there there's buttonholes right so we're in the buttonhole category now and then once we pass through buttonholes then we get into decorative stuff but that's kind of cumbersome right to scroll through them all that way so what you can do is you can either go into your groupings and try to find the stitch you're looking for, or you can go up here and you hit this little button right here and it pulls up uh, pages of utility stitches. So we're in the utility grouping right now. So now there's just 14 pages. Those are buttonholes, applique, heirloom. So they're categorized here and then you could choose a stitch that way. So we have utility stitches, we have buttonholes, and then we have decorative stitches. Once you hit the decorative button, it brings up different groupings of stitches. Okay, so we have our applique, heirloom, quilt, satin, bridge, decorative, long, pictograph, play, and then created stitches. And those are ones that you import from uh, Stitch Composer. Okay, so let's do quilt for now. 
So this is a nine millimeter machine. So when we want to use our quarter inch foot, let me find the quarter inch foot, this guy right here. Okay, when we want to use our quarter inch foot, we want the needle to be a quarter of an inch from this little guy, this little flange over here. And because it's a, a nine millimeter machine, the center needle drop position doesn't work for that. So we come into decorative stitches, we go into our quilt grouping, and then we choose quarter inch right there. And now it moved the needle drop over to 8.3, okay? So you guys remember how we turned on that favorite stitch setting? Let's go in here to this pop-up and let's look at the settings for this particular stitch. So the needle drop position, because it is a straight stitch, so we don't have a width, we have a needle drop position, is at 8.3. 8.3 probably isn't what I would default to when I do a quarter inch stitch. I like my quarter inch stitch to be a little bit scant, more scant than that. So I usually go in and change this setting to maybe 8.6. Okay, and now if I come down here, I see favorite stitch right here. If I want to change this permanently or semi-permanently, I guess, for this particular stitch, I can go save that setting as a favorite stitch setting. And she's already got one saved over here. She has her particular settings that she likes. She changed the stitch length is what she did over here. I'm going to go, this is empty, so I'm going to change it, or I'm going to save it in stitch number two. So I saved it over here. And so now every time I come in and I choose favorite stitch two, it's going to have these adjustments. So the yellow is something that has changed from the default. Okay, so you can go to your default settings by hitting this right here, and we can see that the machine defaults to 8.3 and a stitch length of 1.8, a tension of 3.8, Presser foot pressure is on auto. So what I can do is I can go in and change those settings to whatever I like, and I can go save it as a favorite stitch setting. Okay? If I get tired of using those settings, I can delete a favorite stitch setting, and I'm going to do that because this is Carol Ann's machine. And then I can go in and I can open up the one I want to be on. That's her favorite stitch setting for a quarter inch. Okay, you can save two versions of every stitch on this machine. So you can go into this stitch and save two different versions of that stitch, maybe with a shorter stitch length, a narrower setting, and you can go in and save that as a favorite stitch adjustment for that one. And then you can always go back in later and delete them. When you're tired of them. So I find this to be really handy because sometimes when I sit down to work on a quilt, I'll work on the same quilt over, you know, the course of a few weeks. And every time I sit down at my machine, I want to remember what setting I had my needle drop at. So my quarter inch seam allowance is the same for the whole quilt. Um, other machines, you know, you used to just stick a sticky note on there. Like every time you sit down, you would change your needle drop to a certain whatever. This one, you can go in and, and set those settings permanently, semi-permanently. Okay, so in decorative stitching, we had all those groupings. Quilting is the one that you guys may be in quite a bit, right? We have a question. Oh, we have a question. Okay, so Susie Mann is asking, when, when should the HP foot be used? Okay, we're going to get to that. Um, so the HP foot is a really good one for quilt piecing and for top stitching on bags. Um, I, I use it in, you know, in a, a variety of situations. You can only do a straight stitch on it. So the, the HP foot, what she's talking about, you guys, is this foot right here, okay? And then there's also an HP needle plate that just has one needle drop hole. Okay, and these are designed to work together. There's also a walking foot version of that, AccuFeed version of that. And what this is designed to do is to, technically speaking, it brings the bobbin thread up 
straighter off of the bobbin spool. And so it creates an, a straighter uh, top stitch. And this is maybe a little too technical for, for me to try to explain correctly. Um, but it, it creates a really nice, beautiful top stitch and it's a very stable foot. It doesn't wiggle from side to side. So it creates this really beautiful stitch. It also is a, a perfect quarter of an inch from each side when your needle's in the center. And then you have these quarter inch, oops, you have these quarter inch um, lines on here that will, when you're sewing along, you can see when you get to the, the, within a quarter inch of the edge of your fabric and then turn. So I like these for binding. I like them for bag making. Um, and I like it for quilt piecing. It's a really neat one. And then we'll talk about those needle plates and, and what happens when you switch those out. But certainly for, for uh, sewing, you want to make sure if you put that HP foot on, you'd want to make sure that your needle drop is in the right position. Okay. Let's go back out to utility and see. That's probably the one for HP right there. Left side. Okay. So we've got utility stitches. We've got buttonholes back into decorative. Um, let's go over into something like these play stitches right here. Okay. So right now I'm on this umbrella and so it's going to sew umbrella, 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 umbrella. Up here, I have a little button that has three hearts in a row. That means it's repeating whatever stitch I have chosen. It's going to repeat that stitch over and over. If I hit that button right there, then it's going to do a series of stitches whatever I choose, I can create a series of stitches. Okay. And then right here is the foot that it wants me to put on. That's the F foot, the satin stitch foot. I can also flip stitches. See how it turned it horizontally. And I can flip them vertically as well. doing it. It doesn't want to flip boards that way. Let's try one of these. There we go. That worked. It doesn't want to write backwards. Okay. And then you can delete stuff that you've put on there and you can scroll through like you moving your cursor through and you can delete stuff out of the middle. You got stuff you want to take out of the middle. All right. Um, this button right here will return us to the the beginning of the sequence. So if I'm sewing along and I get down into the middle of this and I want to start over, if I hit that button right there, it'll take me to the beginning of the stitch sequence again. And if I have a lot on there and I really don't know what I put on there, let's put this little magnifying glass up there. So I have an umbrella and then a dress form, some hearts, a shoe, a sewing machine, sweet love. Cabinet. So this is the order it's going to sew everything in. Okay, so if I was sewing along and I got down to love and I stopped in the middle of that and I wanted to start over with my umbrella again, that's when I would hit that beginning button right there. These are spaces, so you can put spaces in between words or lettering. And then this is a locking stitch, so you can program a locking stitch at the end. Let's go down to the end of our sequence here and we'll program a locking stitch at the end. So it'll tie a knot in our threads. Okay. Um, if I made something really cool, I did not make something really cool. I made something really wacky, but if I decided I wanted to save it to the machine, then I go up here to this little file folder and I can write a title. So let's call it, let's just call it by my name so I can go delete it for her later and then hit okay. And it'll save it to the machine. Okay. I could also go save it to a USB, but I don't have one in there right now. Okay. So this button right here spaces things out. So I can say that the whole sequence of stuff that I have put in there right now is going to measure 12.2 inches. And I can stretch it all out a little bit to fit a certain piece of fabric that I want to fill up. So now I'm going to make it 13 and a half inches. All right, this one again pulls up all of our stitches. So right now we're in the play category. So those are all the play stitches and we're on page 36 out of 37 for stitches. So that's what that is over there, scrolling through. 
Um, if you are in decorative and you're in applique, this is another time. Let me put it back on repeat. This is another time that I like to use both your horizontal flipping. So depending on which side I want to sew of my applique. And then I also like to use this B button on this one. So let me show you how this works. So if I'm sewing, sorry. So if I'm sewing along on my applique and I have like an applique that's a square maybe. So this particular stitch, the machine goes forward, backward, forward, left, right. Forward, backward, forward, left, right. So if I stop, I don't know if the next stitch that it's gonna do is gonna be forward or it's gonna be backward because I, I was paying attention there, but usually I'm not. I just get to my corner, corner of my applique and then I don't know if the next stitch is gonna be forward or it's gonna be backwards outside of the field of my applique. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna hit this arrow button and it's gonna start the se stitch sequence over and the stitch sequence starts with a forward stitch so now I know that I'm going to have a nice tight corner there without some errant stitch stick, sticking out the back. Nice, beautiful corner. So that's another good time to use that little button. Okay. And it did tell me to put on the F foot. I have the A foot on there. The F foot and the A foot are kind of interchangeable. Let's see if we've got the other F foot over here. So that's the A foot. The F foot has the same needle drop hole, so you can use them sort of interchangeably. This one's called a satin stitch foot. There's an open toe version of it as well. That's nice for applique, right? This is the open toe and this is the closed toe. Um, but these are the ones that are recommended for a lot of those decorative stitches. Okay, what else? So this one, let's move on down our line here. I'm gonna get a drink of water. So the next tab we've got is ABC. So this is where we find our alphabets and Cyrillic and Greek letters and then some symbols as well. So we have block lettering, script, Broadway, and block nine millimeter. Block nine millimeter is the biggest letters um, and it doesn't have any lowercase in it. It's similar to these, but it doesn't have any lowercase letters in there. But let's choose block and go look at these. So F foot again. So we have um, capital letters, or I'm sorry, we have lettering, we have numbers and symbols, and then we have Greek. And those are Spanish, I guess, and stuff like that. And then this one is capital versus lowercase. Um, and then we have large and small letters. So I can put in some large letters, capital, let's do S, lowercase, A, R, A, H. So Sarah, I can program some spaces in there. I can do smaller letters, whatever I wanna do. And then again, I can go save that to the machine. So if I create a whole quilt label, then I can save it and use it over and over. All right, this section right here, these are called tapered stitches. And so what this does is this takes a variety of stitches that the machine has built into it. And then if we wanted to do it as a top stitch, we don't want it to look like an abrupt end. We want it to kind of taper them in. So you see how it kind of tapers in the end of the stitches right there. It's kind of cool. And you can go in, that one's kind of cool, and you can go in and you can change, make adjustments to the tapering as well with this button right here that brings up our pop-up. So at the beginning, we can taper the stitches any variety of angles. Let's see. And then down at the end, we can change that to any particular angle as well. Okay. And then this is what happens in the middle. This is how many there are in the middle. So right now we have it set to infinity in the middle. So it would just, you would start with this and then it would fill in, fill in, fill in. And then when you hit your reverse button, then it would do this ending stitch right here. But we can also set it to be a particular number 
of stitches in the middle. So we would have this beginning, then we would have five of those, and then we would have that end. Okay. Um, this button right there. I'm not sure what that one does, to tell you the truth. We'll have a future video on that because I'm not sure what that button does at all. Um, okay. The, and then we have locking stitch at the beginning and at the end. So those are really fun to play with. Those are really nice for top stitching, playing around with some different decorative stitches on your, on your projects. This one over here is unique to this machine. This one's called hand stitching. And this one takes each of these stitches and every time you hit the button, it changes the stitch just slightly, makes it a little bit different. And so it's meant to mimic if you were quilting by hand. So it's, it's adding small imperfections as you go, which I think is a pretty fun idea. So if we're doing, this one gets a little goofy. If you're doing a serpentine, just a little bit off, a little bit wacky, right? Some of them maybe look better than others, but that's kind of fun to play with as well, especially if you were doing like an art quilt or something. Okay, and then we get over here into sewing applications. So this one's very, um, very interesting. So when you hit that little t-shirt icon, so it's this little t-shirt icon right here. When you tap that one, it brings up your sewing applications. And this is, this machine has this, the 9450 has it, the S7, there are several, S9, there are several machines that have sewing applications built into them. This one has a lot more applications than some of the others, a lot more suggestions. And they're also categorized into sewing, quilting, and specialty feet. Okay, so let's start over here on sewing. Let's say we wanted to sit down today and we were sewing, um, we wanted to make some pillows. And so we needed to do over edge on a woven. Or we were making something out of a knit fabric and we wanted to over edge on a knit fabric. Here's over edge on a heavy fabric. So any of these that I choose, it's gonna bring in some suggested stitches, one layer of fabric, two layers, or no, one layer, number one, one layer, number two, and one layer, number three. Stitch number one, stitch number two, stitch number three. So different options for overcasting, over edging. And up here it says over edge heavy. So we know it'll work for our heavy duty, or our heavier fabrics. And then it gives us the foot that we wanna use as well. And it'll set up your lengths and widths and everything to kind of try to be successful on your machine. Okay, so it's a really nice way to get into exploring some of the other things that you can that you might want to sew down the road um, without having to know a whole lot about about how to do it. So these are our sewing applications. Blind hem. There's lots in here. There's actually three pages, so we can scroll down and see. Oh, there's buttonholes, buttons all kinds of stuff. And then this one, quilting, is where you're gonna find free motion, ruler work, um, some of your other things for that are particular for quilting. And then this one is specialty feet. So beading, ribbons, free motion couching, ruffler foot, ultra glide, all of that kind of stuff. So get in there and play around with those. I'm in piping right now, so it's got my piping foot, which is letter I, and then it's telling me, do I want to make the cord or do I want to attach the cord to the pillow? So lots of really cool things in there. Okay, last thing I wanna show you guys on this screen, well, we need to get back over here too, I guess, but see this little QR code right here? Do you see how it changes every time I press something new on the screen? You have the app? There's an app called Accu, AccuSpark. AccuSpark, and it's free to download. Everything is Accu. Um, it's free to download, and when you download that app, it has a QR code scanner, and when you scan that code, it's going to tell you about what you're seeing on that screen. So it would explain what this is, it would explain this, um, and just talk about everything that you see on the screen. So it's kind of like a, an, a user manual that you access um, through your phone app and it gives you information on everything that you've got going on here. So if you get into some of these stitches and you're not really sure what this is all about, you can scan that QR code and it'll help guide you through what's going on here. 
Okay, let's go back over to these buttons here. So we talked about settings. This was where we access the memory of the machine. The home button brings us back to straight stitch, right? This one here gives us a couple of things. So we have quick stitch select. This one's pretty cool. So you can go in here and you can tell the machine, I want that quilting stitch 14 because I know that that's the one that I use frequently. And so I could just go in and type in Q14 and it would automatically bring me to that stitch. So if you have a stitch on the machine that you use frequently, like maybe I really like this star stitch right here, you can write down Q40 and save it in your quilting notes. And then when you wanna go find that, you don't have to remember that it's in quilt and go search it out, scroll through the pages. I don't have to do any of that. I can just go over here to quick stitch select and type in Q, what was it, 40? There we go. Okay, so that's a cool one. There's also Quilt Block Advisor. This is pretty neat on this machine. So I can go in here and I can say I want to make a log cabin block today. And I want the width of the block, the width and the height to be five inches. And I want to have five rows. So then it's going to give me, so I can see the lettering of the different blocks that I need. And it's going to tell me how many pieces I need and then what size to cut them to. So it's pretty cool. So then it has a quarter inch stitch allowance, seam allowance on them. So this is a pretty fun little thing to play with if you are making your own quilts and you have particular block sizes you're trying to make. It will tell you how, where to cut your pieces and how many to cut. Okay, so play around with that sometime. And then there's manual dual feed setting. So the dual feed is the AccuFeed foot. And there's actually a couple that this machine comes with. So the dual feed foot is the walking foot for the high-end Janome machines. It's called AccuFeed. And what it does is adds feed dogs above your project to help your top layer move in concert with your bottom layer. Okay, so you've got the feed dogs underneath here. This adds feed dogs on the top. So when we go to put this on, I'm gonna unscrew the foot and ankle that I've got on there now. And I'm gonna put this AccuFeed foot on. And I'm just screwing that on right there. And then on the back, these feet all have this hook system right here, right? And this hooks it into the motor that controls the lower feed dogs. So it makes it highly accurate, but you do have to engage this onto the machine when you first put the foot on. So I've screwed it on right here where the ankle gets screwed on. And then I'm gonna reach around the back and I'm gonna push on that metal hook right there. Can you guys see that? I'm going to push that forward and it's going to click and it's going to engage that foot. And then once I've got that engaged, then the foot can work properly. Oh, I didn't get back out of my settings. So I want to go and I want to tell the machine that I've got the AccuFeed foot on. So I went and I pressed this button right up here. And now it changed the picture to my AccuFeed foot. So I know that the machine knows the right, right foot is on and it grayed out the options that I don't wanna use. It basically just limited me to these straight stitches in my utility stitches. So now let me turn this down so we can watch it go. So it's moving the top of the, of the quilt sandwich at the same rate as the bottom. The other cool thing about this foot in particular is you can change the speed of this rotation relative to the speed of your lower feed dogs. So there's a knob over on the side of your machine. No? Oh, it's in the... <laughs> there's not a knob on the side of your machine. It's in the settings right here. 
Um, I don't know what I would do without you. It's this one right here. So I can change the speed or the differential it's called of the upper feed dogs to be faster or slower than the lower feed dogs. And so if you're doing like a t-shirt quilt and you don't have your t-shirt stabilized and you know, that stretchy material on top, you might actually want, uh, you might find reason for the top of your, the upper feed dogs to feed faster than your lower feed dogs. It might work out better. So you can change the differential speed right there. The other cool thing about this foot is that this little boot, I call it, comes off. Okay, just snaps right off. And this one is interchangeable for different options. So this is the open-toed version of that foot. There's also a quilt piecing or quarter inch version of that boot. And then there's a stitch in the ditch version of that boot that adds the little guide right down the middle of the foot. So you can, these two don't come with a machine. In fact, that one doesn't either, just this one, but you can add some of these on. And if you don't live near the shop, we are happy to ship things to you. Um, so just let us know what you might be interested in. The smaller versions of this come with detachable feet as well. And you can get like a zipper foot sometimes and some other things to go on the smaller ones as well. All right. So let's take that back off. And I'm going to tell the machine that I've taken it off. It's going to say, please make sure the proper foot holder is attached. Put this one back on. Okay, so don't forget when you put that on to reach around the back and engage that hook. Okay, what else? I think that's about it for stuff on the screen. Oh, we were in here, weren't we? Let's see what else we have. So that's adjusting dual feed balance. So you can do manual dual feed setting. You can turn that on and adjust the balance right there. Um, and then it has machine information, what version. So if there's an update out there for your machine, you would go in here and check what version it's running on. Um, the updates are, are just downloadable from Janome's website, and then you just put them on a USB and plug them into your machine. And then this is saying so far the runtime on this machine is 118 hours and 56 minutes. So Carol Ann's been using it. We love that. And let's see. This one is a little bit of on-screen help. So you can go in here and watch little or get information. Maybe it's little videos. I'm not sure. So it's right now it's replacing the needle. So it's telling me lock the screen, right? And then it says unscrew. You want the flat side of the needle facing toward the back. And then unlock your screen when you're done. So helpful little tips if you have questions about that. Um, attaching the dual feed holder. Again, that's our AccuFeed system, replacing the needle plate. Okay, so this little button down here, this is your locking button. And this one we actually do use quite a bit on this machine because when you get into this screen, when you lock it, then you hit this button right here and it releases your needle plate, which is on a magnet, which is very cool that that just pops right off. Okay, this machine comes with, on not sure if you can see that. Okay. And then there's one called a straight stitch plate that divides up that needle drop into three different holes. When you put this plate on the machine, you just drop it in like that. It says, please make sure the proper presser foot is attached. I'm going to unlock the machine. And it recognizes that I have that straight stitch plate on. So it only, it grays out all the stitches that won't work on that plate. So it's giving me the options that I can use on my straight stitch plate. Okay. So let's go in and take that one off and let's put on the HP plate. So the HP plate is the one we talked about earlier that works with that HP foot. This one here or the AccuFeed version of the HP foot. So I'm going to put that one on and look what it did. It automatically moved the needle over to the left side because it knows that the HP plate is on. And so it says, use your HP foot. And these are the stitches that you have available for use based on that plate. All right. 
That's very cool. The other plate you might think about getting might be an Ultra Glide plate. And they're specific to the machines. So we would need to get one for your machine. Um, and it also comes with an Ultra Glide foot. So for, if you're sewing vinyl, leathers, any sticky kind of fabrics, you'd want to use something like this. All right, I'm going to go put this one back on. I'll put that back in. Actually, while we've got it off, let's do, let's do this. Let's talk a little bit about machine maintenance. So if I take it off, this here is called your bobbin holder. Okay, this is what the bobbin goes in. So if I take that out, if I'm having issues with the machine and something's sounding really loud and not sewing correctly, the first place I look is, well, I usually rethread it first because that'll solve 99% of the problems. And then after that, I'll come and I'll take out this bobbin holder and I'll run my finger around it and see if there's any scarring, any damage. If you break a needle, a lot of times you'll get a ding in your bobbin holder that will catch your thread. Because if we are sewing, I'm going to put this back in. I'm going to line up these little arrows right here. And this little bump goes to the left of this little spring right here. And it should have a little jiggle when you get it back in there. That's fine. But watch when I crank this around. When my needle goes down, my thread gets brought up by the hook and it gets swept around your bobbin holder to pick up your bobbin thread. Okay. And if it catches on something as it's going around, not here, it's supposed to catch right there. But if it catches on something anywhere else on the bobbin holder, then you can have problems with your stitching. So we wanna take care of these. These are like tires on a car. They do occasionally need to be replaced, but usually if you have a little nick in it somewhere, you can take an emery file, like a nail file, and just file it down a little bit. Get rid of that um, damaged spot and then it'll work fine for quite a bit longer. So, I'm sure you've got a lint brush somewhere in your kit. I don't have one here handy. Oh, there it is. So this is a nicer lint brush than comes with the machine, but we can just get in here and we can dust out some of this muck, right? I use Q-tips a lot because Q-tips are very lint absorbent. They're like little lint magnets. And so you can stick a Q-tip around in there and just pick up all that dirt and dust. Don't ever blow air down into a sewing machine. All that's doing is blowing the junk further down into the gears. And canned air sometimes has um, moisture in it. And so now you're getting moisture down in your machine too. So canned air is a really bad idea for these. So I've got it dusted out. And then what I would do for home maintenance is get some good sewing machine oil and put a little dot on this wick right here. So right here in the center is a wick, like a candle wick. And when you put a dot of oil on there, it pulls it down into the gears underneath the machine. Um, so doing that once a month is a good idea. And then actually the other place I'll put a little bit of oil is right here on the rim of this hook, like that. And then the bobbin holder will just glide in there so much, so much nicer. It really makes it a lot quieter sometimes. So I'm going to get that back in there. And that's really all you have to do for home maintenance. And then get it in to be serviced annually if you can. These are really nice machines. We want to take care of them. Um, once I've got that done, I can put my needle plate back on, put my bobbin back in, and I'm ready to sew again. Put some extra thread there. Okay, other accessories your machine comes with. These are the free motion feet for free motion sewing. There are a couple of different options for free motion, and that's one set. These are the hopping feet, and these are the more stable feet. And I want to show you something on the machine for those. So these three are all kind of grouped together. This is an echoing foot, so it allows you to echo a stitch that you've already free motioned a quarter of an inch or a half an inch away. Um, and these operate a little differently. So I wanna go into the machine here and show you where we go choose these feet and, and how they differ. Um, and I know this video is getting kind of long. We're close to done, everybody hang in there. 
So I'm going to go into decorative stitches and I'm going to go to quilt. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my t-shirt and I'm going to go to my quilting and I'm going to choose free motion. And then I don't have to do anything else. The machine sets me up for what I want to do. So if you look up here, we have a diagram of one of these two kinds of feet, right? This one's closed toe and this one's open toe, but that foot is represented PDH up there. Okay. If I choose one of these other stitches, now I see one of these feet. Okay. So when you get into free motion, be choosy about what you're going to do because it's going to operate a little bit differently depending on which foot you've got on there. So I'm going to, first I'm going to put on the PDH foot and show you what that looks like. And this one's a hopping foot because as we're sewing, this little bar is balancing on the needle bar right here. And so every time your needle goes up and down, this little foot's going to go up and down. So I'm going to lower my foot and I've got it set kind of medium speed. And it does one stitch first, and that's for me to pull up my bobbin thread. So I can go back later and tie those off and bury them between my layers. And I'm sewing all over my threads right now, but this is just a fun little demo. Okay, so I've got my free motion. And did you see how that foot is kind of hopping up and down as it's sewing? Okay, so that one's a little different than this other foot we're gonna put on there. Watch the difference when I put on, I'm gonna to change to this other stitch and I'm gonna put on one of these feet over here. So I need to use my, where'd my regular foot go? There it is. I need to use the ankle off my regular foot. And this one has two bars to it. So I'm gonna put it on the back first and then pop it up on the front. Screw this back on. Okay. So now when I use this foot, still going to do one stitch for me to pull up my bobbin thread. Okay, so this foot stays stable over my fabric, right? But see what's happening? It's skipping stitches and it's not picking up the stitch every time. The foot is actually too far up above the fabric for this to, for it to sew properly. So I'm gonna go in here and this button right here changes the height of your presser foot over your fabric. So let's lower it down and see if we can get it to sew a little better. I'm gonna go down quite a bit. So now my foot is closer to my fabric. And now it's picking up all the stitches. Oop, it didn't there. I think I moved the fabric too fast. My thread is shredding. Okay, you guys. Anyway, we had to go in there for a little while. Turns out we can't do a video around here with having, without having some kind of blooper in it. So that'll be it for today. <laughs> We're not done yet, she says. <laughs> okay. Got my thread rethreaded. All right. Let's try that again. Lower the press of it. And it's sewing too fast for how fast I'm moving the fabric. My stitches are really short. So that's better. Okay. And that is just by changing the height of my presser foot over my fabric. And sometimes if it's too low, it'll be breaking threads. So you gotta play around with it and find the right height for your project. And then I can set that back to default when I'm done, off and running. Okay, so that's free motion. Other things that'll help you with free motion, this is a low tension bobbin holder. 
which um, will give you nicer stitches in free motion. And then these purple tip needles are what they recommend as well. So getting some of those will make your, make your life easier when you get into that artwork. Um, let's see, what other feet do we have in here? We've got your zipper foot. This is your ruler work foot. So when you go into decorative, nope, sorry, t-shirt design, ruler work, that's where you get into using that ruler foot right there. And make sure you have your table on when you're doing that. Um, we also sell rulers for the machines. We just got a big stock of them in. So if you're looking for something, um, this one is a quarter inch foot that doesn't have the guide on it. No flange on that one. So I like that one if I'm in the middle of my quilt, stitch in a quarter of an inch. And then that's your overcast foot for like doing home decor and you don't want your fabrics to fray inside that pillow cover. That's the one you would use for that. This one is a blind hem foot. This is not to be confused with a stitch in the ditch. It looks like a stitch in the ditch, but the flange actually comes up through the needle drop hole. And so your needle could hit it if you're using it as a stitch in the ditch. This is a blind hem foot, letter G. All right, we also have a button sewing foot. There is a function in sewing um, applications that will help you sew a button onto your project, onto your shirt. So that's great. So I, I teach my husband how to do that. I don't have to sew his buttons on anymore. That's a rolled hem foot. And some of these, we'll do some videos later down the road about some of these particular items like blind hem, rolled hem, um, even the button and the buttonhole foot. Those we're going to do as little snippets so we can get further into the details on those. Um, this is your buttonhole foot. I will tell you for your buttonhole foot, I'll give you a quick overview of it. We'll go into more detail on it later. But you slide this open and you would put your button in there and cinch it down over your button. And that way the machine knows how long to make your buttonhole. And you can make adjustments to that length, minor adjustments right here. This is like a large or a, a larger button, or I call it loose and snug. So if you had a larger button or a thicker fabric or something, you might wanna do a loose and then snug. If you had a really thin button, it makes the hole just a little tiny bit shorter than whatever your button would call for right here. And so let's put this on real quick. And I'm gonna go into sewing applications. And instead of in quilting, I wanna be in sewing. And let's go find a buttonhole. There we go. All right. Okay, so I've got the foot attached. And I usually do Pull the thread through the foot like that. Okay. Put this over here. All right, so I'm gonna lower my presser foot. I've got my button set in there so it knows how big to make the buttonhole. And then this is just a, let's see, we're on a on a medium heavyweight fabric because we actually have batting and stuff in there. Um, and then it says pull down your buttonhole lever. So it's really gonna help me through this. So the buttonhole lever is this guy right here. I'm gonna pull that straight down. And that has a sensor. So when the buttonhole foot hits it from the front and the back, that's how it knows when to turn around. Okay. And then you can make adjustments to the width and the, the, how your buttonhole looks, but I'm just going to trust the machine and let it go. So I'm just going to hit the gas pedal and it's going to do the whole buttonhole in one step. Let me crank it up so we're not here too long. And you just have to make sure that nothing is impeding this. If you had a thicker fabric, we wouldn't want it to hit the bottom of that or it's gonna make our buttonhole too short. So we're just keeping an eye on that lever right there and make sure it's not being hit by anything. And then when it's done tying, or when it's done with the buttonhole, it's gonna tie a knot and everything. And it stops on its own. And it says, raise presser foot. Buttonhole completed. There's our nice, beautiful buttonhole. Cool. Okay, slide that lever back up. So the machine's really smart. And if you um, allow it to guide you through the different projects, you can sew a lot of different really fun things that you may not have done before. 
Um, I can't think of anything else. Can you think of anything that I missed? Do we have any more questions? Anybody have any questions out there? I talk a lot for a long time, so I didn't blame you if you had to go have lunch or something like that. But if you're watching this later and you have any questions for us, just please feel free to get in touch. And let me go get that little card that has our information on it. I think it's right here. Nope, I don't have it, Priscilla. Nope. Okay. We had a little card that had our website and stuff on there. <laughs> you guys can find us. We are sososstudio.com. Phone number is 678-661-0201. So get in touch and either through Facebook or give us a call and let us know how we can help you. And then I did promise you I was going to give you a really good price on that bag at the end of the show. We have one question. Oh, we do have one question. What is the biggest hoop size on this machine? So this is not an embroidery machine. It's purely a sewing machine. Um, so we don't have, the, the Continental M17 is the version of this machine that has embroidery as well. But this one is just sewing, no embroidery. So there's no hoops. Um, the M17 is a really cool machine. We don't have one in the shop right now. We sold one at the last show that we were at. So we don't have one to show you right now, but we can talk about that one in a, in a future video if we would like to do that. And the hoop size of that one is 18 the, by 11. 13? 18 by 11 or 13? 13, I think. It's big. It's like the biggest one on the market. Yeah, maybe it's 18 by 13. Um, but it's, it's huge. You can put a whole fat quarter in there and almost quilt the whole thing yeah. um, or embroider the whole thing. The, what was the other thing I was talking about? Oh, the bag. So we have a couple of, of those trolleys that fit the M7. It's a really nice Janome bag. It's kind of a, has a nice sheen to it. It's a deep gray, all these little red Janomes all over. And it's the same bag for the M7 and the M17. So it actually comes with a padded bag inside for embroidery. But if you, you can use this for something else that comes with it. If you don't have the embroidery, you know, because you have the M7, this is the same trolley. It just happens to come with this. And then there are straps inside for strapping down your machine. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere, right? And some pads and some pockets. I guess the pockets are external. For press or, or for your foot pedal um, or anything like that, your power cord. And then we have a handle here that extends up and pulls the machine around like that. Four wheels. Because these machines are heavy. And I know you're not taking it to your everyday classes, but you might take it for a weekend retreat. Um, or you might take it over to your friend's house for a day of sewing. And so having a trolley like this will make your life a lot easier. Um, these usually retail for quite a lot. If you're watching this video, I'm going to give you um, $150 off of the price of this bag if you would like to get one. And we have them in boxes. We can ship them out. So just give us a call and mention that coupon if you are interested in one of those. Okay. Can you think of anything else? I'll put the contact information in the comments. Okay. Contact information will be in the comments. And if you guys have any other questions or want to talk about something not related to this machine, just give us a call. Okay. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you all soon. I hope happy sewing day. Bye.